All right, in this section, we're going to be talking about multiplying and dividing real numbers or integers. So let's start out with doing something that we already know, and we'll build from there. Okay, everybody has multiplied things like 2 times 3 before, so we all know that the answer there is 6. But let's kind of analyze what's going on here. When we multiply 2 and 3, what are the signs on those numbers? Well, the 2 is a positive number, and the 3 is a positive number. So these are both positive. Okay. You know, when we first learned how to multiply, we didn't think about them as being positive numbers, but now we understand that they truly are. And what about the answer? What is the sign of our answer here? Well, it happens to also be positive. You have been using the rules of positive and negative numbers ever since you started learning how to multiply. You just didn't realize that's what you were doing. When we look at it as just purely rules, here they are. If the signs are both the same, your answer will be positive. So that's just exactly like our example of 2 times 3 equals 6. Our signs are the same, so our answer is positive. Now, if the signs happen to be different, your answer will be negative. So let's say we were multiplying a negative 2 times a positive 3. These now have different signs. Our answer is still going to be 6, but because the signs were different, our answer will be negative 6. Now, that's really all there is to multiplying and dividing integers. The rules are the same rules for both multiplication and division. Let's start practicing and see what we can do. Okay, our first example here, we have uh, negative 6 times a negative 2. Well, when we're multiplying, we just multiply. Just multiply the numbers as if there were no sign there. 6 times 2, we know to be 12. Now, let's look at the signs. Since they are both the same, our answer will be positive. Now, we don't have to write, though, the positive sign. As long as we see a number without a sign, we automatically assume it to be positive. You see how easy that is? This next one says 5 times negative 3. So again, we just multiply 5 times 3, which would be 15, and then we worry about the sign. The signs are different. We have a positive times a negative. So the answer is always negative when the signs are different. Now for our next one here, we have 0 times negative 11. Well, as we have seen before, any time we multiply by 0, the answer is always 0. This is actually a, a property that we have that's called multiplication by 0. It has an, a special name. It's a property that holds true. Because it holds for positive numbers, we also extend that out to the negative integers, and it works there also, and in fact, all real numbers, it works. Anytime we multiply by 0, the answer is always 0. Now remember, 0 is a neutral number. It's kind of like Switzerland. It's neither positive nor negative, and in fact, 0 is called a non negative integer. We can't say it's positive and we can't say it's negative, so we call it non-negative. So our answer here is just zero.